how does one become a ladies man well it's simple you know what and it's super simple i don't think there are any tricks and there are any hacks to it if you were to ask men the same question if you wanted to give a woman advice Mm. on how to get attention from all the high value men in the world the answer would be be a virtuous super beautiful 10 out of 10 high value women so i don't think it's a trick because i don't try to get women I feel like I tried to become the best version of myself I can be, and then women will naturally come to you. And that's as simple as that. And I know it sounds easy. It's actually the hardest answer in the world because it's the answer no one wants to hear. Try to be the best version of yourself. It's as simple as that. Work out in the gym, read something, learn something, become interesting, You know, become wealthy, of course, because the wealth comes with a fun lifestyle. Women love fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why they like fast cars. That's why they like when you take nice vacations, because women love fun. And when you're that guy, you'll be surprised how easy it is. If you're sitting there lonely, if you're truly lonely and you can't get any women, I can't teach you anything. Mm -hmm. Because if you had the basics, you wouldn't be lonely. It's not actually the outside perception you have. Mm. I will walk around the city occasionally if I just finished training in sweatpants and, you know, sneakers or whatever. And I know people know me. But let's even talk three, four years ago when maybe I wasn't so well known, but I was still dressing very well in my in in my free time. Uh, it's it's how you feel in and of yourself, you know. If I saw a beautiful woman sitting there at the mall sipping a coffee, and I was dressed in, you know, my beard was all messy, I had a hood up, and I was in like sweatpants. The confidence you you haven't maximized your own confidence if you if you know what I'm saying. When yeah. you, when you're dressed really really well you just had a fresh haircut you know you feel like a different person so it's how it makes you feel first and foremost like you could do anything you put on a good suit it's the same reason i mean this and this is universal across human nature this isn't something specific to men it's exactly it's specific to women as well it's every single person in the world women will do their makeup and do their hair and put on a nice dress and then their personality you you'll know when you hang out with them seems different mm. they're more full of their confidence they're more their their natural self but definitely it's perception as well people take you more seriously people are more likely to stop and listen to what you have to say you know if you're dressed like a homeless person and you try and dis- disturb someone when they're walking past you they think you want a dollar people are much more likely to listen to what you have to say and also makes you more memorable mm-hmm. also makes you more memorable a lot of guys don't dress yeah. up keep in mind because you go for a job interview you have to understand even if you just bought your basic kind of shirt from a store and some pants and some shoes and you think you're dressed nice that's like the standard issue job interview uniform you know the guy who's doing the job interview i know it's special to you i know you've prepared i know you think oh fuck i really need to get this job he's seen 40 people today 50 yeah. people today who was the guy in the really nice suit that stands out you know so also st- it burns you into people's minds and memories much more yeah when people say when people say the word Tristan Tate oh yeah he always wears nice suits and let me tell you something when you are dressed very well you aren't in a place you become the place you mm. become part of the ambiance of the place mm-hmm. let's say you take the fanciest restaurant you could think of imagine a very fancy restaurant right and you walk in there and everyone's in beach shorts and crocs and baseball t-shirts it ruins the ambiance of the restaurants so you're also doing your part to add to the aesthetics of yeah. a nice location so if you go somewhere like monaco to the casino you can't get in wearing a baseball shirt and crocs they yeah. won't let you in yeah. doesn't matter how much money you have yeah. but you go there dress like me or i'd probably dress better than this if i went to the casino i'd be bow tied up and everything you i'm adding to the aesthetic of the place by just being a man in a thirty thousand dollar tuxedo standing by the bar sipping drinks i'm adding to the place whereas if you go somewhere looking for a bum like looking like a bum Mm -hmm. you're subtracting (laughs) from the aesthetics of a beautiful place and you can get a really you can get a good suit for three four five hundred dollars if you go to hugo boss or something but you can get much cheaper than that and if it fits you well and you're in decent shape yeah, and if you and if you're in decent shape, that's the key. Mm, if you, you gotta work, be in shape. If yep. you work, it's like t-shirts. It's, it's like dull. t-shirts. You wear a plain black t-shirt and you're in good shape versus wearing a Versace t-shirt that costs nine hundred bucks, but you're fat as fuck. But yeah. you know what's the most important? Yeah, don't be a geek. Because <laughs> it's the man inside the suit. Yeah, it's the man true. inside the suit. You give me a t-shirt and shorts, and you put some of these dorks who hate on me in a twenty-five thousand dollar suit, and watch who gets the women. Watch who gets the business contract. Watch who will pass any job interview. Me and my shorts. Speaking. So rule number one. Don't be a geek. Women are always interested in learning new stuff. Yes. Women are always interested in hearing new things that they find interesting. And it always depends on the vehicle of delivery. Yes. yes. You know, it's the vehicle there of we delivery. Go. If if you're a little nerd who's be like, oh, well, women should like me. I know lots of stuff. I read lots of books. Yeah, but you're a little dork with a pencil neck. Women aren't interested in even sitting down next to you, yeah. let alone listening to anything that comes out of your mouth. If they think, mm, I might want to sleep with this guy, because you have to understand, before dates, before dates, before, especially when it's your third, fourth, fifth date, the decision to sleep with you, go to bed with you, 
you, give you what you're after, is already made usually by women before you go. Yep. Yeah. So you just have to go out and freestyle it. If you're sitting there saying interesting stuff that she doesn't know, will she remember it? No. Will she talk about it with her friends? No. But they find things they don't know incredibly interesting. So yeah, become an interesting guy. When you're not looking for something serious, which none of you young people really should be, yeah. have fun. Oh, I got and, one more question. And when this. you're trying to have fun, don't ask what you don't want to know. <laughs> like, girls lie, and girls aren't honest. So if you're 21, the girl you're dating or the girls you're trying to hook up with or whatever aren't probably going to be the girls that you marry. Yeah. You know, if you meet a girl and you think, oh, this is suspicious. Why is her ex handbag so expensive? Blah, blah. Maybe just hang out, eat dinner with her, have fun with her. And when it when it ends, it ends. Maybe don't try to be, hey, what are you actually really doing? You're 21. Shut up. <laughs> One, she doesn't have to explain herself to you. But two, you're not in the position where you can offer something so serious it's only when you finally establish yourself and you're looking for those girls that you perhaps, you know, want to settle down with, want to get married with, want to start a family with, where you need to be analyzing her past. So that's a game to play for the older dudes, I feel, rather than you youngsters. A lot of guys are like 19. Oh, oh well, how do I find a good girl? Maybe just, you know, become a millionaire and find one when you're 28. Maybe maybe just shut the fuck up about finding a good girl. Yeah. If she'll sleep with you when you're 19, maybe that's good enough for now. I think the, the simple advice is accountability and self-reflection what i would like you to do after watching this wonderful show go to your bedroom take off your shirt strip down to your underwear look at yourself in the mirror pause speak to yourself for 10 minutes think if i didn't have this nice house and i wasn't stood here in this particular house with the lamborghini outside and i wasn't this rich what about me would women want and if the answer is nothing then you're only going to attract the women who are into your money and your money only because I've got loads of money and I understand that women enjoy my company. They like being around me. They like listening to me. So if you have nothing but money, then that's what you're going to get. The girls who are after your money. You have to up your game in every single way and stop throwing the money around. And then you'll meet the, the girls who like you because you're strong and fit. Who like you because you're smart. Who like you because you're charming. Who like you because you dress well. Who like you because, I don't know, maybe you, you, have, you have class, you have etiquette, you have poise. You take them to things that they don't know. You take them to the opera instead of this club. The, you'll find those special girls when you are a man that those kind of girls will want. But let me tell you something. <laughs> Most women I know are smarter than the millionaire streamers, the, the clowns who, who talk nonsense and, and do bullshit they are. content. They're aware. They Most are. women I know are smarter. Yeah. So you take someone smarter than they you are. who's after your money, she's going to get it. Then you know what? I'm actually quite a good specimen of man. I'm good looking enough. I'm strong enough. I'm fit enough. I'm interesting enough. Yeah, I can see why women like me. If you can genuinely reflect in that way and you're honest to yourself and you're right, then you should be meeting good women. So, of course, they get the girls who are just after their money. I don't blame the girls. Everyone's going to complain about gold diggers. You're a skinny little pencil neck dweeb with nothing interesting to say. You're not manly. You're not physically attractive. You don't speak well. What else should they want? Yeah. What else should they want? They don't feel protected around you. They don't feel safe with you. Of course, they want the money. It honestly doesn't bother me like it bothers you because I think this is a dog eat dog world. And I think if you're going to make yourself a target because the answer to their problem they think the answer to their problem is more clout, more money. I don't know. Maybe the good girl's going to come along. The answer to their problem is three years of hard work that they're not going to do. Mm. They're not going to do it. And they know that's the answer. They know that's the answer. Three years of hard work is the answer to their problem, but they're not going to do it. So am I going to get mad at the, uh, girl? At, the at, at the lion for picking on the weakest gazelle? Nope. No, I'm not because that's the way the world is. You know, I think the younger men should be seeing this being like, oh, we got finessed by this girl. Okay, cool. And if they run into some money, they should be able to see. So you can learn from bad examples just as much as you can learn from good examples. Mm. So the bad examples are out there for a reason. And yeah. it doesn't upset me to see. It upsets me when I've had friends who are really great guys, really hardworking dudes, try the bet to be the best version of themselves who've gone through bad divorces, who've gone through bad breakups. And yeah, that's sad. And it's sad to see women take advantage of, of men who are actually trying their best. But if you want to be the lame gazelle walking around with a limp, the lion's going to eat you. I, I don't actually feel sorry for them, and yeah. I don't care, because they know the answer to the problem. Everyone knows the rules to the game already. Everybody knows that if you wake up, and you're lazy, and you sit around on your phone, you scroll on TikTok for four or five hours, you go to work at your normal job, you work your shift when there's nothing wrong with hard work, and there's, there's, there's nobility in, in working any job, and then you go home, and you do nothing, and you watch TV, you know you're not going to make it. It's not actually something that I need to tell anybody. That's so true. 
And they do this to me on, on Super Chats all the time. And they do this to Andrew sp- specifically because Andrew is a more accomplished fighter than me. They were like, hey, Andrew, give me some advice on how to be a good kickboxer. Is there a gym near your house? Why aren't you there right now? Why weren't you there yesterday? Everyone already knows the answers. And they search, unfortunately, for, for cheat codes, mm. for magic words that I'm going to tell you that are going to make you rich. You have to outcompete everybody else because there are only so many, although dollars can be printed in an unlimited amount, there's only so much wealth in the world. There are only so many Lamborghinis that are built every year. There are only so many mansions in every single country. There are only so many private jets and so many beautiful women and so much gasoline and fuel and food and caviar and all the crap that everyone wants. And there's only so much gold and so many Patex and so many Rolexes that are made... You have to outcompete other people to get the things that you want. You know us. I am glued to my laptop and phone. All I do is work and all Andrew does is work. Mm-hmm. So the fact that we we have shown such amazing results coming from where we come from, yeah. there's no magic spell. There's no hocus pocus. I go back to my younger self and I'd say, yeah, keep it up because you're definitely going to make it because that young guy who was broke is now me. Oh, the worst advice is great. The worst advice exists everywhere in the universe, and you hear it all the time. The worst advice, I don't know if the people in charge of the world put this out here on purpose, but you see it every single day. Some flowers take longer to bloom. Don't worry. Your time will come. If you're not where you want to be today, don't worry. It's going to happen. Your time's going to come. Your ship's going to come in. That's the worst I've ever seen. And it's on the internet every day. You're going to start seeing it now. You're going to start seeing it. Enough. It's on the internet everywhere. You just scroll past it. You haven't taken in the bullshit. Just fucking Bro, it's, it it's, it's terrible. Wow. And for any young person to sit there whose life isn't going right, who had a failed relationship, they're 21, working a dead-end job, but to see on the internet, don't worry, some flowers take longer to bloom. You're going to make it one day. Your time will come. And God, okay, great. <sighs> Sigh of relief. My time will come. The internet said so. If you buy into that, you deserve to be poor forever. Like, panic mode is the best mode to be in. Things aren't quite right. Life sucks. My girlfriend just left me. Can't pay my rent. Panic mode. Fuck the internet. Fuck some flowers take longer to bloom. Fuck it. My time is going to come. Panic. Panic and succeed. That's the worst <laughs> advice I've ever seen. Happiness is the purpose of life, but not for yourself. Let me make sure that my children are happy. Let me make sure my mother is happy. Let me make sure any woman who comes into my life is happy. Let me even, because men don't have each other's backs these days, make my friends, my male friends, as happy as I can. But nothing about my quest for happiness is about, I guess, personal happiness. I do the things I like to do. I like to drive fast cars. I do these things because they entertain me. But I don't wake up every day trying to be happy. So I don't think happiness is the purpose of life for men. I think men should be trying to make everyone else happy. It's very ironic, actually, that they'll call old-fashioned men like me who want to provide for their women and not maybe have their woman have a job and provide for his family in the traditional way. They'll say, like, oh, you just want your woman to be a slave for you. Okay, she might make a few sandwiches. Okay, she might cook a few meals. She might change a few diapers. But if I'm working 18-hour days, seven days a week, I am the slave. I serve people. That's what I do. The people in my life, I serve them. And by exchange, you know, you, you, they serve you back. You know, your daughter can make you happy. Your wife can make you happy. Girlfriend, mother, they can make you happy too. And just seeing the smiles on their faces is often enough for men. Success is a form of revenge. Success is the best form of revenge. Ooh. I don't believe in getting revenge on anybody. I've had people screw me over for money, break my heart, upset me. Yeah, but I don't do it for the revenge. It just naturally happens. Being, being angry at someone is like holding a burning stone in your hand with the intention of throwing at them. Like it might do them some damage, but it will do you more damage first. Mm-hmm. I don't hold on to these. Yeah. I didn't need fuel to, to go and make something of myself. It's just naturally happened as a form of revenge. But success is a form of revenge. I think it's the only form of revenge.